Think of Colin McRae and you always think of Subaru and Pretzers or flying Ford Focuses. But 10 years before he was WRC champion, he actually entered his first rally here at the Kames Motorsport Circuit in East Ayrshire, Scotland, in a borrowed car, a car that he borrowed off somebody that was broken and he drove it maybe slightly illegally while his parents were on holiday. And in this episode, I'm gonna delve into the interesting backstory of Colin and his relationship with this car, a Hellman Avenger two-door X-Works rally car. Not only that, I'm gonna meet the guy that drove this car when new in period. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to The Late Break Show. So if you watched a previous episode on uh, this channel of the car cave featuring Willie Hamilton, this was the car in the background that we didn't reference. The significance of this car then, Willie? Well, this car is the original car that Colin McRae raced at 17 years of age. It's the first place that Colin drove a rally car and this is a rally car here. You know, back in 85, Margaret and I were on holiday somewhere. I knew nothing about it. They had uh, boys from the car, car club, Colton S Car Club, had said, you know, Davy Byrne owned, owned an Avenger, which was needing a gearbox. And if you could put a gearbox in it, Colin could do the rally. And they put a gearbox in it, came here, did the rally. And they realised that there were road sections in this. It wasn't just based at Cames. They were out and did some farm uh, tracks, stages around here. And they realised that the car wasn't Tax and mot for the road. So they took the number plates off their Hillman Avenger estate car, put, put them on the car and went and did the rally. So it's a good job I didn't know anything about it. You could argue that without this car, Colin might not have ever got his leg up onto the ladder and become what he'd become. Maybe, maybe not, probably not. But needless to say, what an amazing catalyst. And he won the class outright and was 13th overall. As a 17 year old? Yep. Ten years after that first illegal outing at Kane's racetrack, Colin McRae was world rally champion. A nation celebrated. You must be proud to bring it back to this area because it's. Oh, absolutely. This is where it was, it was built in this area, it, it competed in this area, Colin raced it in this area, yes, and then and you bought it back. I bought it in Birmingham and brought it back home to Ayrshire. Yeah. It's funny because as we've been filming today, we've had a chap um, turn up in a, in a lorry that's got full Colin McRae livery murals on it. And he didn't realize this was the first car Colin competed in. Yeah. But he remembers the car from, uh, from the previous owner competing. He was quite blown away by it. This is Ian Gemmell. Ian campaigned the Avenger GT for Scotland's flagship dealership, McConaughey's, when it was new. He won numerous events in the Avenger and has remained a dab hand behind the wheel ever since, despite being nearly 80 years old. As you can see, coming down this here at full charge, coming up onto the track here, all you see is the moon. You do? <laughs> no, you don't no. know where you are. No, no. you can't just see it. it's right. And this is a tight little track. Still got it, Ian. Still got it. Not by getting out there. Ian, your name is still on the door. Of yes, this car, yes right? I... so way before <coughs> young Colin McRae got anywhere near this car, 
when this was new, you were the first guy to campaign it. Yes, oh yes, eh? You had a lot of success with this car. Oh yes, I eh? we were fourth and then third in the British Group 1 Championship with it. Also won uh, the Scottish Group 1 Championship three times. Wow. You know? It also did... Group 1 meaning this is, uh, this is quite close to a road car? Yes, the nearest you get, but yeah. Group N nowadays you call it. No? And am I right in thinking <clears throat> that this used to be the, the Paris Motor Show car of... Well, I was told to believe that when it came. They said it was a week late in arriving because they said it hadn't come back. And uh, we brought it up, and as I say, it went into the workshop. We stripped it right to a bare shell. Yeah. And then McConaughey's were involved in young, training for young apprentices and engineers, electricians, all the rest to do with the, most of the motor trade through Motec. And part of the deal with this car was that it would be built by them. The welding would all be done by Motec and the preparation. Okay, yeah. So the, we stripped the shell bay and it went up to, to Urban and they did all the welding and all the bits and pieces. And this was a this was brand new <laughs> yes. car? split new car. Yeah. <coughs> and they, when we came to do it, the reason I, I knew that it must have come from the motor show was when Chrysler prepared a car for a show, they take all the inner wings and they do them, you know, they dress them all up and all the seams. And it, a car has to be perfect before they make it for a show. Yeah. And this car was perfect in every way, you know, the door clearances and all. So I'm, learned, I'm, I'm quite convinced it was the Paris Motor Show. But I think a lot of people, even in Chrysler, didn't know that that's <laughs> where, it, you know, where it was coming to. Bizarre, isn't it? Straight from being on a turntable oh. at, at the motor show. Oh. To being taken straight up to Kilmarnock, uh -huh, uh -huh. to McConaughey's, yes, uh -huh, that's and right. basically stripped to a shell, shell. ready for competition. Yeah, for, yes, I, I. And the video I've got there shows you that. You know, me driving it into the garage and it being stripped down. Is it true that one of your daily driver vehicles is a Sierra Cosmo? Aye. Uh -huh. I've still got a Cosmo. you still got it? still got it, aye. How long have you had it? Oh, years and years. <laughs> Imagine Colin as a 17 year old competing on this and then realising that this wasn't the only track on the rally. It was linked to other road, road parts and other off road parts because he had to drive it on some road stages. The car needed to be road legal. Hence why. I had a new car built for seventy for for seventy six. Yeah. Which I never drove because they, they, they changed the Ford right to, uh, as, as seventy six, the early seventy six. So the second the new car was sold off. Chap Roy up in Aberdeenshire bought it. And then this one was sold off as well. This was sold off, yeah. Yes, I. Did you, did you miss it? Because you liked it. Oh, I, I loved this, eh? Hey, hey. And you went from uh, this to uh, an Escort Mexico? Escort, I. No, I went to an Escort RS2000, the first droop snoot. Ah, OK. Aye, aye. But we have just tremendous trouble with that, you know, to start with, engine wise and various different things. So it took about two years to sort it all out. Really? Aye, aye. And then, so not a better car? No, no. I had a one mole. At least three times, maybe four times, if I had this car. The Avenger was always a superior in tarmac. No, handling was always superior. Moving to Ford uh, to race um, uh, the RS two thousand. Uh, 
the way I've always seen it is that the Avenger was a sort of out of the box as a standard car was a superior car to the Escort. It was. Hey. But w would I be right in <coughs> thinking that it was just the Ford have always been the masters of marketing? They were the ma Ford were they better at marketing aye, if their Ford product. Ford to win something, they win. No, and they'll design the thing to win. And the Mark One Escort was successful, so they just carried it on and spent the money in competition department and and made it win. No, yeah, it was the same when they came to the Sierra. No, they, they built the Cosworth Sierra to win the, the touring cars, no? Yeah. And they won it. And then they realised that they weren't good enough for the next year, so they bought out the 500. But, and that's Ford. If they want to win them all, they'll win them all. They'll yeah. just go 100% at yeah. it. Yeah. When you were campaigning this car, you never rolled it? Never ever rolled it, no. You've never rolled put it? Put it on its side. You put it on its side, yeah. As did Colin McRae, apparently. Did he? Uh, yeah, apparently right. he oh. did, yeah. All oh, right, I don't do that. But no. it got pushed back on oh, yeah. by the by spectators oh, and he oh, carried on. Right. It's one of those stories, it's a lesser known car. It's a bit of an unsung hero and I it believe was... it's it's the only car that is synonymous with McRae almost that isn't in the McRae collection. collection. Oh, oh. Well, see, well, I was friendly with Jimmy. Jimmy and I used to have some good ding-dongs, no? And I was probably always the, the tarmac man, no? Of all the kind of Scottish drivers at the time, I was really the tarmac man because I was reared in the wee side roads around Ayrshire here, no? And I was going to say, the road, this is where you grew aye, up. I grew up around the, here. The, the Ayrshire and Freeshire, around the wee back roads. And the oh, roads around here oh, are stunning. Oh, oh, oh. Not driven an Avenger in a very long time. Yeah, it was the car that I kind of learned to drive in when I was about 12. This was never a McRae owned car, but obviously, I think a significant car in the McRae story, not part of the McRae collection. The track is so narrow. <laughs> this is the underdog escort. That's what this is. In standard form, Arguably a much better car. And it's thanks to that four-link rear suspension. Just more agile. Now they made the Avenger from 1970 to 81. So it came out two years after the Mark 1 Escort. And it was the arch rival of the Escort, really. It's just so good to think of 17-year-old Colin giving this hell, putting it on its side, hit clipping a boulder. But, you know, coming 13th overall, first in his class, first ever rally. Ten years after that, youngest world rally champion ever. I can't believe this car still exists. You know, it's wonderful, it's survived all of what Ian did with it then into the sort of privateer years all around Scotland and, it, and yet for me it's a mixture of excitement and just weird familiarity. I look at the, the dash, the conical dash gauges and it does just remind me of my mum taking me to school, me and my brother and learning to drive with my dad. We certainly did not have the twin 40 Webers on our 1600 estate. It did not sound this good. Everything feels familiar. That Avenger badge on the dash, glove box over there. Really spookily familiar. Where have they all gone? Oh, and the gearbox on Avengers was always really, really slick. Really slick, it was wonderful. This just makes me want an Avenger quite badly. I followed a Porsche into a stage and he couldn't make anything on me. In fact, I was pushing at him, no. And then until he hit the hill road, then of course he just disappeared. But these things, Joe Pat O'Kane in Ireland, he was a great Porsche man and Carl Curley and them. No, they said, no, the Avenger down, we were a bit down a river, down the side of a river, a twisty road down a river. And Joe Pat said, look, said, I just couldn't catch you. Wow. No, the, the Avenger handled, handled great, no? But... Uh, and why was that? Just because of the, the way it was built, no? It was the traction and everything that got it, no? 
the four link. The four link, aye. When so, you, so I used it, to always tell people if you go down a side road and turn right into another road and boot an escort, the back road go, yeah. do it with an Avenger and it just. Yeah. No, the four link was the. Oh. As Ford eventually came to as well, didn't they? That's right. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah. They all became four link. But, uh, but this was four link from square one. Aye, from square yeah. one, aye, aye, yeah. aye. Oh. And the boot is a big family boot. Yeah. No? Uh, more so than an escort. Escort was a shallow boot. Yeah. Aye, aye. So, no, it was a great, great size family car. Well, Desidel told me. I lived me, in one for many, many, aye. many of my formative years. De Desidel, Desidel told me that. When he first started the dealer team, the average age was about 43 or 44 of somebody buying a, an Avenger. And within two years, he brought it down to 19. Wow. So that's how successful it was to the manufacturer. Yeah. And that's why Chrysler put the money into the, the dealer team. Yeah. You no, know, was its success. And, and being so successful on the racetrack. You no. Know. Oh, he's a touring car. Aye, aye, yeah. aye, aye. The Tiger came out in 72, but it was, weirdly, it was four-door only. Which seemed odd when it was going up against the Escort Mexicos. This was the, the sportier looking car, in a way. Gosh, yeah, Avenger Tiger's 50 years old this year. Do you know what, it feels really quite a friendly car to drive. Ian said this, he said, compared to the Escort, you know, this car, certainly the back end, it kind of had your, you, you could put it where you wanted to put it. I mean, isn't it wonderful to just see Ian tooling around in this still? So I think he's 78 years old. Still taking cars out on the track. In the summer, daily drives his three-door Sierra Cosworth, which he bought off someone as a, as a, as a recce car. The gauges, that dash, that little blue key. I've still got the old blue key of our Avenger, MHY781R. Now, if you're wondering why the number plate is different in the photos of McRae on this event in September 85, it's because, as Willie said, McRae did something a little bit naughty and took the uh, tax disc and the license plates off the estate tow car <laughs> and slapped them on this to get past scrutineering because he didn't realise that there were road sections and it needed to be road legal. I'm enjoying this even more than I was expecting and I, was, I knew I was going to love being in an Avenger a motorsport Avenger. I wanted to bring this video to you on the Late Break Show because this is a car. The Hillman Avenger deserves so much, so much more appreciation than it gets. It lives in the shadow of an Escort. And yet, if this car with this provenance had a Ford Oval on it, it would probably worth five times more. Probably. This car was dead by 81, but the floor pan, remember, of this lived on in the Sunbeam Lotus. And the Sunbeam Lotus was probably the last successful rear-wheel drive rally car before it all went four-wheel drive. And kind of just like the Sierra Cosworth donated its floor pan, to the Escort Cosworth, the Avenger donated its floor pan to the Sunbeam, the Sunbeam Lotus. I've wanted to tell this story on the Late Break Show for ages, not for just personal reasons, because I have a particular affection for Avengers. It is kind of the first car I ever traveled in, what I learned to drive in, I saw the dashboard of as a kid, but also the lesser known story about Colin McRae and the lesser known story about this car. It went from being a works rally car with Ian at the wheel, 10 years after that, being Colin McRae's first foray into the world of rally here at the Keynes Motor Circuit, still owned by East Ayrshire Car Club. Just think, if this was an Escort, how much more it would be worth. 
yet it lives in the shadow of the Escort and it probably doesn't deserve to. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Late Break Show. If you haven't already subscribed, why not become a subscriber? Why not become a Patreon? You can get early access to videos like this and you'll also get some more behind the scenes stuff as well. Cheers. proud and that was one of the things that Colin said he just said you know world champion he said, the world's a big place isn't it yeah. you know and you know I always remember that <laughs>